welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm hoping that we are going to finish our Dalmatian. So we're going to get the faded neckline around here and we're going to start darkening up and adding those final details for um, the finished piece. So everything you need is listed below. I hope you've really enjoyed this piece. I've really enjoyed doing this one. Because it hasn't taken as many parts I may release an extra tutorial this month um it does depend on time where i have enough time to do it um but yeah let's get going okay so i have zoomed you right into the neck and we are going to start as usual with our warm gray one and we're going to apply this as a base layer just by this spot following that fur direction down by this spot so this is the warm grey one as our base layer and this is where we're going to start getting a nice blended look. So to get this blended neckline we're not going to do a large neck but as we come down here we're going to start lightening our pressure and just fading it out so harder to lighter pressure. And we're just going to do that along the neckline. So just made sure that my Warm grey is nice and sharp and we're going to bring it along here and I'm just going to blend it outwards because we want to get the cold grey one over the top and along this edge to give it the highlight. So hopefully that's making sense. So lightening my pressure along this side and as we come down this neck I'm lightening my pressure so that we can get a nice faded neckline. along here and I'm just going to start bringing the one by one over here and remember I'm still looking at that fur direction even though we're going to get this fading neckline still focusing on the fur direction okay Then we're going to get our cold grey one. I'm just going to remove that graphite that I've got here. And with a warm grey one, uh, cold grey one, sorry, so coming down this neck. So this is the edge. So this is like a highlight to the neck. And then I'm going to bring it over the top of that warm grey one. So I'm pressing hard with the cold grey and bringing it over into this warm grey one. And again, lighter pressure as we come down here we're going to get a nice fading neckline and then I'm just going to go over with the cold grey one this is where it will all start blending nicely together Okay, and then I'm going to get my warm grey two, and again, just going to start just darkening up a little bit. Remember, I'm not really focusing on detail here because this area is quite out of focus. So this area is mainly focusing on the tonal colours. What colours can you see? And just getting them marked down, and then again, lighter, lighter pressure. So we get those nice faded edges. Okay. Then got my white. I'm just going to go over all of this. Burnish. Really push it into the paper. And then as you come down this neck. You're going to press really hard. And that's just going to help get that nice faded neck. Right, so as we come down this neck, we've got a nice lick of fur coming around sort of this corner. So we're just going to get that marked in first. So I'm using the warm grey one. And I'm just following the shape where we've got this little lick in the fur. And then I'm going to take my cold grey one along that edge. Because we've got that highlight going on. And then back to the warm grey one. Okay. 
Okay, and then for the darker part in the uh, curl, I'm going to take my brown ochre first and I'm just very lightly sort of mapping in that shape, joining it up into that already yellow colour that we've got going on. And again, mapping in some of that firm. Now, we're not really focusing on detail, we're just focusing on colour. Uh, then I've got my gold. And then I'm going to come back in here with the cold grey wool. And then over the top with a warm grey wool. And then again with my gold, just to really highlight this curl. Coming around this fur. And then my white. Blend it all in together. And then I can see I need a little bit more detail, so I've got my warm grey too. Just following it around. Always making sure I'm following that fur direction. And then I'm just going to use this warm grey too, just to sort of map in this edge of the fur here. And then I'm going to lighten it off as we come into that faded edge. Okay, and now again I'm coming in with my gold, uh, warm grey one. Looking at that fur direction and just building up the base layer along this side of the neck. Bringing it down about here. I want it to, I think I'm going to make it curl sort of like this the neck. And then I'm getting my cold grey one again, just lighter edges where we want that fading neckline. And then I'm just going to press a little harder here where I just want it to be a bit cooler in colour. One grey one there. And then again, the one grey one. Now I've got, I don't know if you can see here, I've got little indents in the paper. Um, I'm just going to ignore them. So if you ever get indents in the paper, just ignore them. Don't try and fill them in. Just completely ignore them. Sometimes it happens. So we've got basic colours laid down now. And I'm going to come in again with the gold. And I'm just going to start building up the fur direction. With this gold. And this is going to act as a bit of detail that we can just smooth out when we get come to using the white. So I'm just looking at where there's some little um, fur lines and little like wrinkle lines, I guess. Contours in the face, in the neck. Just mapping them in with the gold for f at the first. And then I'm going to take my cinnamon very lightly over the top of that gold. So this is last time, you may remember we put a bit of cinnamon along here. Just starting to bring in this pink now. Over that gold. Again, following that fur direction. It's changing a lot on this neck, so you need to be aware of that. A little bit along here as well. And 
And then I'm going to take the warm grey too. Uh, actually, I just go to the brown ochre. Just going to bring that in along here. And then the warm grey too. Over the top. And again, this is just going to smooth out some of that detail that you've added in with the gold and the cinnamon. Which is fine. We don't need this area to be extra, extra detailed. It can be nice and smooth. And then I'm just going to taper that edge along here. Get my white. And again, we're just going over the top of all of that and burnishing it. So pressing quite hard with the white. And then the one grey two. Cold grey one. Just gonna darken along here a little bit more. Back to the warm grey too. So it's just swapping between the colours again, as usual. And then the white. To burnish. And then along the bottom here. Okay, so you can see now we're really starting to build along this neck. Okay, so I'm going to come in this side to build up here. So I have once again my one grey one. And we do have a black spot here, but I'm just kind of going around it at the moment. The, the straight edge here where that spot is. And then tapering it off. And I'm just going to bring that tapered line. So light pressure along where I want that neckline to be. So I've got a nice sort of curve, curve going on and I'm just going to do it along this side as well with a warm grey worm. So I think I'm going to bring that a bit further down. Light pressure. So I'm just mapping it in very, very lightly just so I know sort of where I'm going with this curve on this line. So it's not a lot long neck, but we've got enough neck in to show that this dog isn't just a floating head. <laughs> And if you wanted to go ahead and do the rest of this neck yourself, you could. Um, I just quite like the idea of this floating edge. Um, coming in with the one grey one now, it's basically. So I've done that line there. And I'm just going to bring it in as well. This uh, one grey one along here because then we can just build up here. We'll do the um, spot after. Let's just build up this neck. Um, I've left a gap along here because we need a cold grey one. So I'm just erasing the graphite and then getting the cold grey one. Nice soft edge. And then over the top of that one grey one there. And I'm just going to take the white just to really soften the edge along here. Like so. Right. So let's build up here first. So we're going to our raw umber first. And I'm just going to follow that darker line down here and then just fade it out so when i'm saying like fading out and lighter pressure it's all about just reducing the amount of pressure on that pencil so that the pencil's barely touching the paper and then you can lift it away and you're just left with a nice faded edge then got the bister 
going over and remember we're going over that area that we've already done just to help blend it all in and again just fading out towards the bottom edge here with the vista I'm just going to darken along this edge with a vista as well so a little bit harder pressure when I say I'm darkening the edge and then lightening up towards the bottom then taking the burnt sienna just over the top here and darkening up this corner a little bit more and then I'm going to go over that with the warm grey one pressing harder now just to help blend and burnish these layers together and the white along the bottom here and then I'm going to take the oops, warm grey two along here again lightening up along that bottom area I'm just going to grab the cinnamon very lightly over the top of this warm grey two and then the warm grey one pressing harder followed by that white once again just to help blend especially along that bottom edge there right so I am going to do this part of the neck first before coming in and doing the black spot so going back to my gold and I'm just following once again that fur direction so it's coming down the neck this time and lightening my pressure towards the edge so down the neck and I'm just going to map in some of the detail along here as well It's going to be darker here where she's kind of going into the contour and a bit of like a wrinkle. Just going to darken there. Grab the cinnamon over the top of the gold. And then I'm taking the warm grey too to really darken this edge. here I'm also going to take the cold grey one in the middle so over the top of that warm grey one in the middle following the fur direction whiter along the edge and then take your white once again and just blend out so soften out those lines and just really press that pigment into the paper and burnishing it really help on there right let's get this spot in so warm grey one I'm just going to sharpen my warm grey one and bringing in this spot so I'm going to we obviously need to get a faded line with this black so I'll bring that warm grey one in and again fade it out so tapering those edges lighter pressure at the end and then obviously harder pressure at the top where we are flattening the two for the paper so we can work on top and build those layers neatly. Now it's quite a dark spot is this one but I'm going to come in first with my warm grey six and we've got some of the spot coming up here first and then it's coming down and I'm just ma mapping in that shape that I can see. Now we do have a harsh line here, so make sure we keep that harsh line. And actually I'm just going to take that one grey two and just bring that harsh line a bit darker. Along there. Okay, back to the one grey six. 
And now as I come down with the warm grey six, I'm going to again start to taper those edges. Start to taper it off. So we're not I'm pressing lightly, tapering it off, and then along here we can press harder. So we want to get that nice tapered edge towards the end of the this spot. And I'm gonna just press harder in here now with the dark, uh, with the one grey six. Oops, maybe not too hard that you snap the end of the pencil. End up with a line where you don't want it. <laughs> okay, so I've darkened here. Just darken that line up here. Get some of that edge coming out. <laughs> So as I come down here, I'm hard hard pressure into lighter pressure. See, just I'm going to start to really lighten this edge, and you can do that when coming back in with your warm grey too, just to really help soften. And that just needs to blend in. So we're getting a nice gradient here. Take my warm grey one. And then I can get my white just along this edge. And I'll just drag some of that pigment down. Blend it outwards. Back to the warm grey six. Laundry two. And the white again. Just drag that pigment. So it's just a bit of back and forth between the warm grey six and the what lighter warm greys. So you get a nice gradient that you're really happy with, and we've now got a nice faded line along the edge here. Now I'm just going to take my black. And I am just going to darken along this line here. Not too much because the one grey six has gone quite dark here, but especially along that throat edge there. And just blend it outwards a little bit. Okay, so we've got another spot in. We are nearly there, guys, nearly there. Now, again, in this section that we've got left, there's a lot going on with the fur. So I'm just going to start off by we've got a little highlight. Um, where we've got like a bit of a contour going on so cold grey one along the edge here and again just fading outwards i feel like that neckline just this is the one grey one i'm just blurring this out a little bit so it's in line so this was the cold grey one and i feel like i just want to bring that cold grey one over the top here as well of what we've already got down And then I'm just going to bring in the warm grey one as a base layer. So blend it outwards so it joins up with the rest of this faded neckline. And then I'm just going to add this as a base layer. Just going to work on top of this. A lot going on in this section. First of all, I need to just sort out this spot, so I'm just one grey six, just lightening up this edge here, and this spot edge sort of comes down here, a bit lighter there, and lighter at the edges. So this is why I'm using the one grey six, because we use the black prior. And then I'm going to come in with the gold and again I'm following that fur direction. So I'm making sure that what I'm doing is constantly looking back at this reference photo and I'm just following the shapes that I can see all the different turns and the fur. Bring that outwards and make that curve up that little contour. So hopefully you can see that shape that we've made. I'm going to take the cinnamon
going on the top. Again, I'm not really focusing on detail, just on the shapes I can see. And the colours. Um, I've got the brown ochre as well. I'm just going to bring a little bit of that brown. And if you're bringing any of that colour down towards that faded edge, make sure you're fading the pressure. And then the long grey too. When I'm using the long grey too, I am pressing a little bit harder just to help burnish, push that pigment together. And fade edge. And then the white. Especially along this edge. And then I've got the raw umber, which one, I'm going to get the bister, take the bister instead. Along this neckline here, and I'm just going to bring it up. So I'm kind of just now starting to blend and add finishing areas off, adding colours where I feel like I need it across the whole piece. Back to the long grey too. So I feel like that's coming down here. A bit more detail in here. Okay, and then the bister again. In here. So all I'm doing now is I'm just looking at my reference photo, just adding a few extra colours, but I'm also looking at my piece as a whole and seeing what I want added to my piece. So I want this bista. And then I can go over the top of that with the warm grey too, just to again smooth and blend. I'm also going to take the warm grey one and I'm just going to blend the edges of this black spot. Circular motions just to soften it out a little bit. And again here, just want to soften it out. Okay, I'm just going to take also take the warm grey two along the back of this head. Bit of a shadow from here, just along the edge where that ear is. So, take the warm grey six, just gonna sort of drag some of that pigment with the direction of the spots. I'm not looking for detail, I'm just looking for that sort of blurred out of focus look. That there is a little bit of detail there, but because it is out of focus. We can't really see it, but we can. We're giving the indication of it being there. Back to the warm grey two. Just gonna darken along here a little bit more. This is just a little bit of extra contrast to the fur. And a great way of doing this is if you took a fur to your piece now. And turned it into a completely black and white photo. If there's any areas where you don't have that definition, this is the white, just a blur, you know you need to go back in and add a little definition. Back to the copper. And 
And then when I'm adding this copper, I'm going to go back over with a warm grey one. Because that'll just knock back the, the metallic sheen that this gold does have to it. So the warm grey one. Sorry if you can hear my dog's stomach. <laughs> Really making some noises. Okay, I'm quite liking that for this neck now. Um, I just want to darken along here as well. So the warm grey two, I'm just going to sharpen the warm grey two. And again, just coming down here. in the neck okay right let's have a look at these spots i'm taking the one gray six we move the camera okay so the one gray six on this ear and i'm just gonna darken along here Grey two, just along this edge. More black because I really want to darken. So any areas that you really want to darken, darken them up. That spot along there. So this is kind of like the point now where you're starting to look at your piece and go, what does my piece need? Where does my piece need to be darker? Back to the warm grey six. So I'm not really focusing on the reference photo now. I'm looking at my own piece and going, what do I want it to look like? What needs to be darker? And that's exactly what I'm doing now. Just darkening up areas that I feel need to be darker. So taking my black, I'm just going to sharpen it. Get some nice sharp lines coming through. And uh, make sure it's in shot. There we go. I'm just going to darken... So a lot of these we did actually do quite light. Could have gone a lot darker when we initially drew them. But I'd rather stay light and then come in with the darker tones if I need them. Then go too dark and then can't lighten it all up. So I'm just adding, literally looking... At the reference photo for some of the details that I may need to add in. Where maybe this spot needs to be darker. So I'm looking at the contrast in the reference photo, but I'm also looking at my drawing and going, what do I want from my drawing? Back to the warm grey six. Just to darken that spot. And I just want to darken here as well. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to darken this spot. So back to my what black. Of harder pressure now. Back to the uh, warm grey six. So some of these spots don't need to go as dark as the black. 
So where they don't need to be as dark as the black, I'm using the warm grey 6 instead. So it gives us a nice dark colour. It doesn't have to be as dark as the black. Okay, right, let's have a look. Back to the um, warm grey 6, I'm just going to... Okay, back to the warm grey two. Just giving a little extra definition. I'm just going to darken here as well, actually, with the warm grey two. Wow, actually, your stomach, that dog's stomach is making some right noises. I have to walk and then come back and finish this. <laughs> we nearly there though. Back to the warm grey one. Warm grey six. I don't know if you can hear his stomach, but my gosh. I've just zoomed us out of um, our Dalmatian and I'm really happy with how this is looking but we do have a lot of white fur to come over some of these black spots and to do this I'm going to be using the brush and pencil touch-up texture and I mix that with the brush and pencil coloured pencil titanium white and I'm going to show you how I do it um, if you don't have this product don't worry you don't really need the white hairs over the spots um, you could leave your piece looking like this, it looks complete, or you can use the slice tool, your eraser, uh, whichever method you've got. I just wanted to do a tutorial with this method so that people can see how um, I would go about another way of creating white fur. So I'm just going to move the drawing out of the way a minute. And what I do is I have an empty plastic Faber Castell kneaded eraser box, um, and I just use this because it saves me buying a whole palette for something that I don't use often. And then what I do is I take, first of all, um, my little lid is broken. So I take, make sure you're in shot, the coloured pencil titanium white. And you can see it's like a powder. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to sprinkle, if it'll come out. God, take some doing. There we go. So you can see I'm getting some of that fine powder here. Now, with the coloured pencil uh, touch-up texture, you want to make sure it's shaken. So you can see underneath you get a bit of white residue, so you just want to make sure that all that has disappeared. Now, I haven't got as much white residue because I have just used it this morning, finishing up a commission. Um, so I have come back to finishing off this part of the tutorial. So when I shake it, there's no white residue left at the bottom of the um, touch-up texture. And then what I'm doing is I'm just going to take a little bit and I'm just going to pour a tiny, tiny bit. You don't need a lot. A few drops in there. And I'm just going to add, because I've got a, a bit too much of that texture, a bit more of the powder. I want a bit more powder to um, liquid. And then I'm just going to take my paintbrush. And I'm just going to mix in. Yeah, I've got a bit too much liquid there. That's fine. We use the edges, so I'm just going to use an edge to make sure I've got a nice mixture here. This will all soak in and start to dry up and then we can use it properly. So I've got a very fine line of brush. Just mix in. And you can see it creates like a paint-like substance here. So this is the area that I'm probably going to use. I've made way too much of this, but it's fine. A little goes a long way with this product. I've had this for a long time now and I still haven't cut through half of it. So let me move these out of the way again. So that's how I mix up the brush or pencil or touch up texture. Get the drawing back again. And let's do some white hairs. 
So I'm going to start near the nose and I'm just going to come in with a fine liner brush and it's just going to, you just paint it on and you paint it on over the top. Can you see how it just goes straight on over the top? And the good thing with this is if you do your little stray lines a little too thick, we can come back in with the pencils later once this is all dried. And we can just make these lines a little thinner so like that's come out a little too thick. I need a really, really thin brush. That's what I need. And then you can just add a few little white hairs. Coming over. Again, I'm just constantly looking back at that reference photo, making sure that these white lines are still going in the correct direction. So you don't have to do this step. It's not necessary. You could have left your Dalmatian at the point it was at. It's just a nice little step that I like to do. And it's a different method of creating white fur. They're a little too thick. So I am going to come back in and uh, make some of these a lot thinner. We've got some white hairs coming over here. But this product is specifically made to work. I just need my um, tracing paper. This product is specifically made to work with um, coloured pencils so it's archival and the great thing is we can oh that's too thick uh, we can go over the top of this with our coloured pencils afterwards just gotta let it dry I'm just creating some of these white hairs coming down here and we've got a few whiskers And I'm just constantly just topping up the tip of this brush with that mixture that I've mixed. So it is a, it's an awesome product, especially for commissions. I do like to use this if I'm not using the slice tool. Um, I like to use this product. You can also get something called Pearl Burnish where you don't have to mix, do the mixing yourself. It comes pre-mixed. So all I'm doing is I'm looking back and forth at my reference photo and I'm just, I guess I'm painting in, but drawing in those whiskers. So we've got some large whiskers coming in here. So I'm just going to, and you can go over these a few times to really brighten it up. So this is going to be quite, it's quite a tedious section because you just drawing out whiskers. Oh, that's a bit thick. I have to make that one a little thinner. <laughs> but again, just take your time. And if you're doing this with a slice tool, just take your time or your razor. Just about adding in some of that white whiskery fur. I'm just trying to take some of the excess off of the tip of this brush. And what I can do is I can come in with like the white pencil and I can draw a white pencil over the top of these if I want them to be really white or we can dull them down and use a grey or any other colour. We can just draw right over the top of this product. I'm just going to come in here as well. So I'm not going overboard. I don't want loads of white hairs on my Dalmatian. Just a few. I'm 
I'm just constantly going back and wetting, getting product onto, ooh, getting product onto my brush, but making sure it's not too loopy, which that bit was. I might need to just make it a little bit more. So it does dry quite quickly, which is why a little bit goes a long way. You, you want to use little bits and then just make up more. Um, as you go along. So let me just move you across a little bit. So I might try and get some of the um, pearl burnish and have a go with that. I've not used that yet. Um, and I like to use, I like to recommend products that I've used especially because then I can say, yeah, this is what it did for me. This is how I used it. If I've not used it before, it's, oh, so you get little clumps of the powder. Um, if I've not used it before, I find it harder to recommend. Um, so you can see how just how glumpy that was. I think I'm going to have to get a bit more liquid on here and just mix it in. But... And you could also use this if you wanted to add a little bit of a really white highlight in the eyes. Maybe we want to just bring in a little bit of life. And here we've got some like eyelashes so I can come down. Oh. Oh. With the eyelashes. And then just keep going with making up some of these spots or these white hairs in the spots I should say right let me just add a little bit more texture in here sorry I just realized you couldn't see what I was doing so I've added in some of the little white hairs around here and we just started on the eye so not not much and I'm just coming in and literally just adding where I want a few little extra, oh that's a bit thick, a few extra white hairs and I'll show you what I do like when I've come in too thick in places how I can draw over the top and how we can create the look that we want constantly looking at the fur direction still, still want these to be going in the right direction Okay. So can you see how that's just really added to the piece already? We're starting to really um, bring her to life. So let me move you across to the ear. And I'm just going to do the same on the ear. Just bring in some little white hairs. Starts off quite... I do need to get a thinner brush. This brush is just a little too thick for some of these fine hairs I want. But it's fine. I, I don't worry about it because I can I can draw back over the top of this product, which we are going to do. And I'll show you how we can just make it all look nice and blended together. But this is our final part of our Dalmatian. So it's all this is all about the finishing touches now. So I hope you have enjoyed drawing the Dalmatian. I know not everybody will have this product and that's fine. Um, but I did want to do, I want to do some tutorials where I do use the products that I I would use in a commission. Um, just so that everybody's got a few other options for their work. The next tutorial I'll make sure I just use the pencils. Because we've been using like the slice tool, we've been using the, this product. So I want to go back to like the basics again and 
make it accessible to everybody and we'll go back to um just the pencil so can you see how that white is just starting to really lift the piece together it's like a whisker coming out here as well so any anywhere where i can see like these whiskers i'm just coming in and painting them in Oops. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do because obviously I have it is a bit heavy in some places. So we're going to ref really refine and then say that this piece is finished. Okay, are we happy with what we've got? Okay, I think, yeah, I think I'm happy with how this is looking. Don't think there's much really that I want to... Oh, oops. Cat metal. Tracing paper. Right, we're going to move back to the front of the face while the back part dries, and I'll show you how I refine all this. So I'm coming in with my warm grey five. Just going to come in and add some more black hairs and this is just literally now all we're doing is just really refining and making this piece complete. Just got my black as well and I can go over some of these white hairs in between if I get my white and any of these white hairs that I really want to stand out I'm just going to draw on top of what we've painted on you can just draw on top of that with a white really help them stand out and then I come down here again with a black and I can just make these whiskers really refined really refined in between them like this whisker I did a bit thick so I'm just going to come in with a black and just go over the top of what I painted bring in that white And there you go, so back to the warm grey four. Just in between. A few little hairs there. And then the white again, I can just come in over the top. Some of that painted on texture. Which really define those white hairs. We also want to take our warm grey one because we've got some whiskers along the bottom of her face here so I'm just going to come in and add them very lightly. I'm not pressing hard but she does have some whiskers like we did by the eye so I'm just adding these around here. And then I'm just going to go over them with a the white just to really soften them out. So I'm using the white to just almost like blur them, just soften the edges, going over the top. Okay, so she's got a little bottom whiskers in and her top whiskers back to the black and I'm just coming in. Just going to refine. And I can bring that white in again. If I need to. And 
back to the black. Warm grey fur. This may be black. I'm just going to get the white. So it's just swapping between just to sort of reinforce some of that and then go back in with the black and just refine in between. The layers. Hey, okay. and then oh, sorry, you didn't see that. I keep forgetting about the eye. <laughs> so all I've done is I've refined around these whiskers, uh, whiskers, the um, white markings. I went in with the white on the white white markings, and then the black around to really define. Okay, uh, now the ear, <laughs> and I'll make sure you can see what I'm doing. Let me zoom. There we go. So I'm just coming between those little whisk, uh, whisk. I don't know why I'm obsessed with whiskers. Hair. <laughs> the white. Because I could have done a few more white hairs in this spot, but I didn't. It's fine. And you can see I'm just drawing over the top that product that I've added so if there's another product that I would recommend definitely that um, I think I got I got mine from Jackson's art if I remember properly and you need the touch-up texture and the titanium white from brush and pencil but it's so so worth it I love it <laughs> I use it especially for whiskers on portrait. It's more so because like I'm doing here you can draw over the top of it. Going back to the warm grey four. And because I can draw over the top of it, it just creates that extra dimension to a piece because it means that I can just really blend it in. The white That's the one way for. Like so, right. Oh, and along here. This with the white. Okay, let me zoom you out. And there we go. There is our completed Dalmatian. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. White fur again. Uh, a lot more white fur. And a little bit of black fur. Um, and yeah, we've got a nice little spotty dog that's appeared. If you've got any questions, do let me know down below. And I will get back to you. Um, but until next time, I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you've not already. If you're already subscribed, thank you for coming back. Talk to you all soon. Bye, everybody.